Praise the Lord. I am uh, encouraged this morning. It's been a great service. Uh, I have a few thoughts that I'd like to share, and I appreciate your patience ahead of time with me. Um, I definitely am thankful for the Lord's patience and for his love for me, for all of you. Um, as I stand up here today, it's definitely not because I love myself. <laughs> so um, I love the Lord, and I love all of y'all here. Um, you know, I was reminded a, a little bit this morning and yesterday that uh, Jesus, he didn't come to save those that could save themselves. He didn't come to save the righteous. He came to save sinners. Are there any sinners in the house? Because I'm one right here. All right. Romans 3, I know we know this, you don't have to turn there, but it says Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. You know, we have all gossiped. I have. You know, I mean, there, you know, she even pointed it out. You know, there's, we think in our minds there's a good and a bad version of gossiping, but that's a bunch of, that, we've been deceived in that belief. The truth is gossip is gossip, and what she said is right. I mean, if you are a child of, of Jesus, if you're following Jesus, then you're going to be on his mission. You're going to be loving other people, and you're going to be spreading his message. His mission was that all would come to know God. In Romans 6, all right, I'm not walking the Roman road, but I, 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 you know, I do want to go to Romans 6. And uh, I want to start Romans 3 because I want to give, I want to just say, you know, we're all at the same place. There's no one better than the other. You know, I've been reminded so many times lately that at the cross, that's an even ground at the cross, all right? That means that we're all the same. And we all, I mean, I'm telling you, whether you got $5 billion or one red cent to your name, you need Jesus just the same. It doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter where you came from, doesn't matter what color of skin you got, don't matter how you smell, none of that matters. Because at the foot of the cross, it's all the same. You are a soul. And that's a revelation that somebody here might need to hear because I wasn't even thinking I was going to say that. But I want you to know you are a soul. You are not a physical body. You are not flesh and blood. You are a soul. You're, you were meant to live eternal, all right? And eternally in worshiping and loving God. That is, there's no better place than your soul could be than to be worshiping and in sync and in unity with God, the creator of all things that like... And we were just king. You know, that's amazing. Uh, Romans 6, though, I want to read some of this um, because I think it stands as confirmation to se what several have come up and said. Um, and, and it did come up recently in a Sunday service about this being a slave and whatnot. So I, I don't know if this fits, but um, it's so hard to even know where to jump in. But I, want, I guess I'm going to jump in at, uh, well... I'll just start at the beginning. <laughs> Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. You know, if your heart's been changed at all, then you're going to have what Naomi said. I believe what she said was true in that, you know, if you're sinning, I've said it before, you, you are not one step away from being in front of Jesus. If the reality has ever hit you of what that's going to look like, you will be just like her. You would say, you know, I would rather you leave me here until we get that sin eradicated and completely gone out of my life. Now, that's not to say that it wasn't all paid for at the cross, because it was. But when you're living by that, then I, I agree with her. I'm like, you know, Lord, if you haven't removed every piece of me that needs to stay in this world, I'm not ready to go on. I don't want you to take me when it's ready, when it's the right time, when I know that when I'm in heaven, there will never be something I'm going to look back at and go, ooh, I wish I would have done that, or I wish I would have had that, because that's what happened with Lucifer, all right? That's what happened with Lucifer. He was the greatest angel ever. God created him perfect, and then Lucifer himself wanted to become God. And without God removing all that pride and sin and self from us, then we're going to run into that same predicament. And so God knew this. He's way smarter and wiser than any of us could ever be. He created all of this so that he would have it. Garden of Eden, the, the apple was there, that tempted. That was the same kind of thing that tempted Lucifer to say, ooh, look, God's telling me to stay clean, to do it his way, to trust in him, the life, right? We, God is the life. Or, in Eve's case, she said, ooh, I'm going to go take that apple. That apple is going to give me something that God can't. See, that whole apple is sin, is pride, is self. And every one of us walk in that garden every day, spiritually speaking, going back to that soul, 
Is your soul wanting the Lord? Is it choosing Jesus? Do you want Jesus? Do you want salvation? Do you want his righteousness or do you want the apple? Do you think that something might be better than what God has to offer? In this it says, we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism and a death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If you have not been born again, you need to be born again. You really do. I pray that you will be. If you do not know Jesus, if you haven't entered a relationship with him, if you have not been born again, if you do not have new life springing up out of your life, then I beg you to get on your knees before you leave here. It's the most important thing, just like we've heard from other brothers here. I mean, the most important thing is, have you been saved from death? Have you been saved from sin? Because if you haven't, then you're still dead. And uh, this is a good way to notice, to know whether or not you have new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. That is an awesome promise. Praise God. We know, for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. I want to be free from sin. <laughs> Every day of my life, every second, right now, I want to be free from sin. I never want to sin because sin separates me from God. He is holy, holy, holy. And in order for me to be in his presence, I too need to be holy, 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 or I'm nothing. I'm going to be gone. It's just like oil and water, right? I cannot stand in God's presence without him. <laughs> I'm going to continue reading. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, hmm, praise the Lord, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord, I need that, I need that. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Uh, I really appreciate what Brother Bobby said this morning because we all have a choice. And I mean, when you're, you know, I find it every day, I'm tempted, and uh, the, the Lord's faithful. <laughs> uh, there, there is a choice that you have on whether or not sin will reign. That's the thing, is sin reigning? Is it determining the direction of your life? Or is your direction based on Jesus? There, that's a good determination of whether or not you have new life. Same thing. Uh, or are you choosing sin? You know, just is, is that where you're, you know, are you in uh, just an ocean of sin, I suppose? <laughs> or are you in the ocean of grace, right? Um, let me just, uh, in verse 14 it says, Sin shall not be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. And I had that, this is what came to me while Naomi was speaking. It was actually that scripture that I wanted to give out to her and say, you know, sin will not be your master. And I'm claiming that in my life too. <laughs> sin will not be our master, amen? Because we are not under the law, we are under grace. All right? If God, if, I'm telling you, I think I said that already, but if I did, I'm going to say it again. If any of us could do it ourselves, then God wouldn't have had to send Jesus. Somebody should have let him know. Saved him a little bit of trouble right? But the reality is that he had to come. We could not do it in ourselves. That is grace. I'm telling you that's grace because there is, and it's grace then, and it's grace now, and it's grace tomorrow. It's grace always, eternally. The only thing that I can ever do, again, to be in that holy presence of God, to be with God, God had to make that happen. I couldn't do it. I can't do it even now. We can't do it. We need the Lord. We need his grace. We need to be under his grace. Um, all right, so I have another scripture I want to read uh, just to give out. First Peter 2.24. I had this one come to me this morning, and uh, it's one that I felt like I wanted to give out because it's a, 
It's a really good one to stand by. Amen. And I have one, uh, I have a couple of others. So it says, uh, "He himself, Jesus, bore our sins, our sins, in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness." And it says, "By his wounds, you have been healed." Amen. That is the healing that brother spoke of earlier. It's the healing from death. Right? Because there's nothing that none of us, just like he said, I mean, there's nothing none of us can do to escape death. The healing we all needed more than anything, and the thing that everybody in this room needs, everybody who may hear this needs, more than any healing of your physical nature or any provision in your life, the number one thing you need is healing for your salvation, healing of your soul, being reconciled back to God. And God loves you so much. That's what he wants. He wants that more than you do. <laughs> and he loves it. He wants it so much. I'm reminded of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That was for us. That was for every one of us. And I hope and pray that it's been real personal to you at least at one point in your life for that mustard seed of faith to grow. Because if it hasn't, then again, you, I, don't, I want you to have new life. God wants you to have new life with him. He wants you to be born again. All right. Speaking of God's love, oh, I want to, there's an, another thing. So jo, uh, Joshua 24, I read this to Phil the other day too because it fit right in with something that he had been saying. But I think this is what God's really putting us all to this morning, and I'm thanking him for his patience. Again, as I said to begin with, you know, it's his patience that none of us are perishing. Because if, if he wasn't patient, we would, it would have already been done. It's only his patience that he hasn't already wrapped us up because, so, because he hasn't finished the work in somebody's life. Somebody's still being saved. I am. <laughs> so until he comes back, I believe that'll be happening. Joshua 24:15. This is a very familiar scripture. But again, I, I just feel real led this morning to give this out. Um, whew. This, one, this one pricks me a lot, I'm be honest, because uh, I mean the way it even starts out, it says, uh, if ser but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you. So I'll just stop there and say it kind of goes back to the position of your heart, right? If you love the Lord, if you really recognize him as Lord and Savior, if he's king of your life, then this won't even, I mean, this will be like, I, this will be unfathomable to you. How could serving the Lord not be desirable to you if he is your Lord, King, and Savior, and everything to you? I know that, uh, I, I guess another way maybe to draw this out is that, you know, if, let's just say JP, if JP went out here today and uh, my family was about to get hit by a big bus or something and he saved their lives. I would feel indebted to him, right? I would, I would be thankful to him forever. I would do everything I could to serve JP in a certain way because he had, he had saved my family. Well, I think that to me this is a similar description. That's the best way I could describe it to you is the Lord has saved me. He's my Lord, my King, my Savior. He's everything to me. So I definitely want to serve him. I want to trust him. That's part of being saved is trusting him and having faith in him, isn't it? Believing? Well, when you trust, obeying is like, it's synonymous <laughs> just about because you can't have one really without the other. Anyway, I'm going to continue. I'm sorry. Um, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Stand on that one. I believe the Lord will increase our faith to be able to do that because it's only with his faith, it's only with his power that we can serve him at all. It's only grace. There's no law that gets us into a position where we can serve our Lord. I mean, that just, it's just not possible. I have one other thing that I'm, that I'm going to read this morning. And um, I know that, that the Lord loves us. 
And on this Father's Day, um, I'm blessed to have my father still with me from this world. But, but I'm so humbled before our Heavenly Father. And I'm humbled before him because of his love for us. This is um, a letter that I'm going to read to you that I believe I've sent out to some, but I'm also aware that not everyone here has internet, and I'm sorry to say that maybe not everyone here has received a card from me at some point. Um, if you've never received a card from me, feel free to let me know. I I'm, I'm not, would not be offended by that. I'll write your address down, and I'll make sure to get you some cards. <laughs> um, I want you to know that I care. I want you to know that I love you. I would, again, wouldn't be standing out here if I didn't, believe me. Um, but way more important than that, all right, and way more important than me, and I hope for a second you can almost envision that I'm not standing here, okay? Um, but this is a letter, it's, called, it's titled A Father's, or The Father's Love Letter. And it, uh, it's an intimate message from God to you. Each one of these that I'm going to read is a, uh, is a scripture from the Bible. And uh, I don't know, I believe that the Lord really blessed this man to put this together. It is anointed. Um, and precursor to me, I know many here are aware of the Jesus Calling devotional. Well, a precursor for me, I guess you could almost say it may be part of my awakening. Don't we all need to be waked up every day? <laughs> I do. Um, part of my awakening and really just being able to hear from the Lord in a fresh new way, this was just so critical to my walk. And so I'm sharing it with you. Of several weeks ago, I felt like the Lord put it on my heart to do this. So again, I, I believe he'll bless it. Um, I do want to mention, when I'm done, I'm probably just going to sit down. Well, no, I have one prayer. I'll pray and then sit down. But uh, at, at the end of the service, at the window seals at the back, I have copies of this letter for anyone who would like to take one home with them. Again, thank you for your patience. This is Father's love letter, an intimate message from God to you, my child. You may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up, I am familiar with all of your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image, in me, you live and move and have your being. Praise God. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who do not know me. I am not distant and angry, but in the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sand on the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you all with all my heart and all my soul. And I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you these desires. I am able to do for more, more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. 
When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your father, and I love you even as I love my son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Praise God. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift, I'm going to say that again. <laughs> if you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. And nothing will sep ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad, almighty God. If like me, if, if, you, if that almost demands a response from you, right? I mean, God's asked me, do I want to be his child? Well, yes, God. Absolutely. I want to be your child. The other scripture that I would like to read is from Matthew 6. And it'll be quick. This is a prayer that I know that we've all heard before. I'm reading it so that I don't mess it up. <laughs> but if like you, or if like me, if uh, when, you, when you hear that, if you feel like it's it really, you know, you want to be the Lord's child, you know you are, but you still want to respond, I would just say, feel free to read this with me as I say this. And this is Jesus' words. Everybody knows how much I love his words. But this is his words. He's teaching us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen.